Hello, we're sitting here at the USDA Service Center in uh, Guthrie Center. Uh, this is a Bicon um, Cedar, a broadcaster, uh, the, the Soil and Water Conservation District here owns. Um, the districts across Iowa have really uh, done a nice job of having some different equipment around for landowners to use when we get into these seedings and these kind of projects. But to discuss this a little bit, this is a broadcast seeder, and it's really um, the preferred tool when we do dormant seedings. And it's a preferred tool if we're in a seeding where we've done tillage, and we've used the roller, and we're gonna use this for a broadcast and, and roll it in. The thing that, that makes it special is it's got an agitator in it. And when we deal with our native grasses, you can see that it's a lot different than some of the other stuff we're used to seeding. It's more fluffy up. It is cleaner today than it used to be. It used to be even more mouse nesting. But because of the way that seed is, with it, we need an agitator to keep it mixed. Um, this, this has the agitator. We get about a 15 foot spread. When we're using a tool like this, we also then got to think about, you know, how are we going to know where we seed it? And there's some different tricks. One is today, some of the tractors on them, they got the GPS, so we can mark 15 feet and, and we can use that. Um, I've seen guys use corn planters, like a six row corn planter with a marker down, go across the entire area, just so that you have that marker as a guide. And then you can run that, this seeder right over that marker or right in between. Um, I've heard of um, another land manager that put a log chain on the back and they hook up a, a concrete uh, block and just to make that mark for them. And then some guys, you know, uh, really like to put it in ideally a one inch fresh snow and that does an excellent job. Um, the other thing when we're talking about broadcasting seed is, you know, we want to get the right rate. And with, if you're new to running one of these, it seems like you get to know what you're doing about the time the project's done. So some, some things to think about, if you've got some small areas, do them first and know the acres and get your seed weighted out for, for different areas. Or, and, and that way you're monitoring what you're doing to know that if you need to open up these holes that are on the bottom, to give out more seed or less. Ideally, you want to start with the holes pretty small so you, until you get this kind of figured out. One of the other um, things we like to do with this seed is put in a median with it. So using something else in there to bulk up the seed. So cracked corn, rice holes, um, I've heard ground up corn cobs, um, wood shavings, something in there, even oats, so if we're using oats at, you know, and we're doing a dormant seeding, which we think about mid-November, you know, we can put that in there and we're not, those oats aren't going to survive in that seeding. They won't go through the winter, but they can be used as a median. So it, it helps us to, to get that so that we're not going through that seed quite as quick. We can see what we're doing more on that spread pattern. Well, another thing to think about, if you're doing some interseeding and we're not using very much seed, We've got three holes on the bottom of this cedar, and we've got, here, here's where we adjust how big those holes get. But when we deal with a lot of this native seed, we're dealing with seed sizes that are very small to pretty large. So just cranking it down to, to put on a pound or two of the acre won't put the larger seeds through it. So these type of cedars, they've got a plate that you can put in there that will actually cover two of the three holes. And so by doing that, that reduces our seed, allows us to have the opening of the one hole a little bit bigger so the seed flows through.